Hey everyone and welcome. Today we're tackling leak code problem 3397, maximum number of distinct elements after operations. It sounds a bit complicated, but don't worry, we're going to break it down step by step and find a really clever and efficient solution. Let's get started. Okay, let's look at what the problem is asking. We're given a list of numbers, called nums, and an integer, k. The core idea is that we can perform an operation on each number in the list, but we can only do it once per number. So what's this operation? For any number in our list, we're allowed to add or subtract some value, as long as that value's magnitude is no more than k. This gives each number a range of possible new values it can become. For example, if a number is 10 and k is 2, we can change that number to anything from 8 to 12. And our main goal is to make these changes in such a way that we end up with the largest possible number of unique or distinct elements in our final list. We want to avoid creating duplicates if we can. Let's walk through the first example to get a feel for it. We have this list of numbers and k is 2. We want to see if we can transform this list into one with six completely unique numbers. Okay, let's try to build our new list. For the first number, 1, its range is from negative 1 to 3. Let's make it as small as possible and pick negative 1. Now for the next number, 2. Its range is 0 to 4. To get a distinct number, let's pick 0. What about the other 2? Its range is also 0 to 4. We can't use 0 again, so let's try to make it a 1. That works. Following this pattern, we can transform the list into a new one, where every number is unique. The key seems to be making smart choices to avoid collisions. Just a quick heads up, we'll be walking through the solution using Python, but don't worry if that's not your main language. The logic is the same everywhere. I'll be showing the full code for other popular languages like Java and C++ towards the end of the video. So how do we make these choices systematically? The best way is a greedy approach. First, let's sort the input list. This helps us deal with the smallest numbers first. Then, as we go through each number, we'll try to transform it into the smallest possible value we can, with one crucial rule. It must be greater than the new value we just created for the previous number. By keeping our new numbers small, we leave as much space as possible for the bigger numbers to find their own unique spots later on. All right, here's the Python code for our greedy strategy. It looks pretty short, which is great. Let's break down how it actually works line by line. First up, the setup. We sort the list of nums, which is the cornerstone of our strategy. Then, we initialize two variables. One is count, which starts at zero, and will track how many unique numbers we've successfully created. The other is previous, which stands for previous. This will hold the last unique number we made. We start it at negative infinity to make sure that our very first number can be anything, since there's nothing before it. Next, we start a loop that goes through each number in our sorted list one by one. Inside this loop is where we'll make our greedy choice for each number. This is the heart of the algorithm. We have two constraints for our new number. First, to be distinct, it must be at least one greater than the previous number we made. Let's call this our target. Second, the current number we're looking at can't be transformed into anything smaller than its original value minus k. Let's call this its minimum possible value. Our greedy choice, which we'll call cur, has to satisfy both of these. So we simply take the larger of the two, the bigger of our target and the minimum possible. Finally, we have to ask, can we actually make this cur value? We already know it's greater than or equal to the number minus k. So the only other thing to check is if it's less than or equal to the number plus k. If it is, that means it's a valid transformation. We've successfully found another unique number. So we increment our count. And, this is key, we update our previous variable to be this new cur value, setting the stage for the next number in the loop. So, how efficient is this? The most time-consuming part of our solution is the initial sort, which runs in big O of n log n time, where n is the number of items in our list. After that, we just loop through the list once. For space, we aren't creating any new large data structures. The space used is just for the sorting algorithm's recursion stack, which is typically big O of log n. It's a very efficient solution. All right, as promised, here is the full solution in Java. You can see the logic is exactly the same. Sort the array, then loop through, making that same greedy choice. Feel free to pause the video here to take a closer look at the implementation. Next up here is the C++ version of the solution. Again, same exact pattern. We sort the vector, initialize our counter and previous value, and then iterate. 
You might notice we use a long long for the previous variable to avoid any potential overflow issues when we add one to it, which is just a good safety practice. And finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. The sort function needs a custom comparator to sort numbers correctly. Otherwise, the logic remains identical to the Python version we walked through. Hopefully seeing it in a few different languages helps solidify the concepts. So let's wrap it up. What are the big ideas here? First, when a problem involves making choices about a set of numbers, sorting is often a fantastic first step. It lets you process things in a structured way. Second, this problem is a perfect example of how a greedy strategy, making the locally best choice at each step, can lead to the globally optimal solution. By always picking the smallest valid number, we maximize our chances for future success. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leap code easy, medium or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Also, if you're looking for even more leap code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems, so if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this Leak Code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. This channel doesn't make any money from sponsorships or ads yet, so if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.